Today in the program Master of Crafts, Ukrainian robots for security, agriculture and education. Robotics is an obligatory discipline for all modern children who successfully develops the industry in Ukraine, which is experiencing a boom all over the world. UATV went on a mission to find out what Ukrainian robots and their creators are capable of doing today. The first image of a robot that shook the whole world and had a huge impact on mass culture was the famous man-machine from the film Metropolis. According to the plot, the inventor sought to make his creation impossible to distinguish from a real woman. To do this, the director forced the actress to lie in a plastic mold for a long time, so that the suit or the shooting of the film accurately resembled the outline of her body. At the suggestion of Fritz Lang, the science of anthropomorphy had basically become the main prerequisite for robots of the future. Almost a hundred years later, dozens of films with humanoid machines were released and science fiction writers invariably described the 21st century as the era of electric maids at home, mechanical soldiers and so on. The condition of resemblance to people seemed self-evident, and even at that time it was clear that meeting that condition by providing robots with useful capabilities would be an extremely difficult task to achieve. It turned out just so. Today's humanoid robots somehow know how to move around and express the main human emotions, but a complex electronic brain is simply not compatible with that of a robot. The preposterous Sophia robot, developed in 2017, which impressed viewers and journalists with believable facial expressions and mimicry, functions through a remote computer, so in fact it turned out to be a robot, namely an anthropoid shell. The humanoid-like robots that we grew accustomed to seeing in films like Terminator is not exactly what robotics is about. This is only the tip of the iceberg as a science. If the modern complex smart house wakes the owner, cooks breakfast, puts together a list of things to do, and sweeps and mops the floor, how does this differ from the robots that science fiction writers dreamed of? Why buy an anthropoid robot to protect your home from burglars if a small robot can perform these very same functions? This electronic machine can be turned into a robot bodyguard. It will cruise around the perimeter of your home and control the entire territory around it. In this case, artificial intelligence is already being actualized. Here, a neural network is implemented. Who develops robotics in Ukraine and how? What can Kyiv engineers offer to impress scrupulous and demanding customers from all over the world? And why are new generations simply obligated to know as much as possible about real robots? Vlad Kotov received a master's degree in business administration. However, after returning to Ukraine several years ago, Vlad discovered that there was a shortage of high-tech projects in this country. I've been in a lot of countries and have seen a lot, but I did not see any startups. That was when I came up with the idea to create something interesting to give impetus to opening startups. At first, we thought of creating a specialized design bureau. Such a bureau requires highly qualified personnel, but education and traditional engineering was not of the required level in Ukraine. Ten years ago, the curricula of Ukrainian universities did not contain robotics in its modern-day advanced form. In fact, at that time I came up with a great idea of offering robotics courses on the standard curriculum of specialized learning institutions. When I came up with this idea, there was nothing similar in Ukraine. There were situations when there were not enough components, so I decided to create them myself in order to put together a full-fledged curriculum offering course in this field. In order to do this at that time, I found and gathered most of the information from foreign resources. In 2013 to 2014, when Ukraine was experiencing political and economic upheavals, these people imperceptibly laid the foundation for the industry of the future. So, in the country, dozens of courses in robotics were introduced. However, Vlad and his supporters were probably the first to combine a school and a working design bureau. We create conditions for people to devise some clever concept things, invent smart gadgets and create technological startups. Such an idea came to the fore and we are now developing this idea. I am very pleased that we have invested our own funds into this initiative and that our robot house is now generating a huge number of startup projects. How it's done? 
In this design bureau, the focus is on prototyping. Today, many specialists in the fields of programming and mechanical engineering consider this to be the most important stage in the development of new applied technologies. Creating a prototype means quickly designing a working model on draft upon a customer's individual or specific request. For example, if a customer needs a quadcopter with the ability to shoot a high-quality video at 360 degrees, then a team of engineers must assemble the drone with these parameters in a short time without carrying about appearance or aerodynamics. If the prototype robot is rejected by a certain customer, this should not incur too many losses for its developers or cancel out several weeks of hard work performed by engineers. The main objective of creating our design bureau was to launch the process of rapid prototyping. In order to generate primarily new prototypes, new startups are created from these prototypes. Such new innovative startups generate small businesses, which contribute to a growth in the GDP. Which prototypes and models do foreign companies order from Ukrainian engineers? For example, drones for agriculture. In the 21st century, the innovative concept of so-called precision agriculture was conceived. It allows for more efficient and effective management of resources, in particular water and fertilizers, and also increases productivity in livestock and crop yields. Drones provide farmers with the capability of constantly monitoring the conditions of livestock and sown crops from the air in order to quickly identify problems that are not visible during selective inspections conducted on the ground. Agrarians can only determine which part of the crops is not sufficiently irrigated in photographs taken from a bird's eye view. In addition, flying robots are used to spray crops with protective chemicals and fertilizers. They are able to spray plants with much greater accuracy than a traditional tractor. This allows farmers to not only cut costs, but also reduce the risk of farmers being poisoned by pesticides. The future of drones for agriculture looks very promising. According to Global Forecast, the volume of the market of agrarian drones will exceed $1 billion by 2024, and 200,000 such aeronautic robots will regularly fly over farm fields all over the world, and among these robots many will have the label made in Ukraine. Another promising sphere is guard robots. In California's Silicon Valley you can already see such mobile platforms developed by local engineers. In fact, they operate as smart surveillance cameras and raise the alarm if they see something out of the ordinary. In Ukraine, Vlad Kotov and his engineers are developing their own guard robot. It is just smaller and more universal. They also decided to call it MIGI. In essence, today MIGI is a so-called platform which allows users to assign any set of necessary functions. But first of all, we connected a very interesting set of technologies to this device. These are the latest technologies which today are used by the giants of the global information and communication world. The concept of the Internet of Things was formulated back in 1999 by American scholars and computer engineers. This is a computer network of physical objects, they call them things, equipped with built-in technologies to interact with each other or with the environment without human interference. Smart House is just one of the manifestations of the technology of the Internet of Things. Roughly speaking, the MIGI acquires its own intelligence, which means that it is no longer dependent on control by its user. A human being is inherently a kind of a robot. It roams around the home, analyzes the territory and learns to recognize people around it. And each time it becomes more intelligent on the basis of a neural network. While a human being has a peripheral vision of approximately 120 degrees, this robot can see 360 degrees of everything that is moving around it. Indeed, the robot has an all seeing the settings can be easily changed on the side, which the robot itself creates for the user. When working with a MIGI, one cannot even understand all the intricacies of engineering and robot programming. However, this is what Vlad Kotov hopes to change in the future. The best time for a person to learn this technology is at a very young age. For this reason, Ukrainian robotics designers have essentially created such a clever toy. The details of the MIGI robot are built right into the box. The form factor of this robot, as you can see, is made of plywood and echo wood. You simply open the lid, squeeze out the details, follow the instructions, assemble it, insert the electronics, wires, and decorate it to your convenience and desire 
together with your child, for example. After that, you simply connect the power supply and the robot runs, and when it sees an obstacle in front of it, with the help of sensors range finder ultrasound, which is exactly what a bat has, the robot can easily circumvent any obstacles. The robot's program is open. This means that if a child or a teenager wants to modify it, they will not need to buy any additional functions. Such options and functions can be set individually simply by following the instructions provided on the device's website. This application is absolutely free, and you can install it in your computer, on a mobile device, or on a tablet. And when connecting it to a cable, you must program it in a C-like language for certain functions. For example, you can speed it up or slow it down. I do not say that it is necessary for everyone, but one must at least understand how it works, understand what it's made of, and of course, it is convenient and necessary for any users. At the heart of such a toy robot is a popular electronic scheme of an international model. It is also used in robotics classes. If the plywood model has kindled the interest of a child, they can sign up to master the platform further. Indeed, it used to be very difficult to assemble any devices in homemade conditions. It was not enough to read a couple of articles on the Internet. It was necessary to know both the circuitry and the soldering process. Today, thanks to these designers and boards, it's a do-it-yourself job by spending several evenings surfing on the Internet, while with this motherboard, all you need to do is understand how it works. Here you do not need to solder any schemes and deal with small cogs. The students are given ready-made blocks and are explained the basic principles of how it works. Then users can understand how to assemble the first models on their own. 20% theory, 80% practice. It is important for Bogdan that his words understand the principles of the operation of logic circuits and programming. A child or an adult can write their own algorithm, define the algorithm of the robot's actions, point by point, test it on the finished device, and see and understand how it all works simply on the basis of a simple construction kit. Very straightforward visual puzzles and special visual programs by carefully following the instructions. In the world, this is called STEM education, the combination of science, technology, engineering and mathematics for the development of technical creativity. STEM education is necessary not only and not so much for children. Vlad offers special courses for adults. Many specialists from Ukrainian enterprises and design bureaus of the obsolete format have a strong desire and drive to keep up with the times. In some cases, Vlad and his team still have a great deal to learn from young inventors. Guys who were about 16 years old came to us. They showed us technologies that have not yet been released on global markets. However, they simply did not have the opportunities or sufficient knowledge to implement these technologies. For example, they brought spectrometers of all kinds to determine the weather in the field, especially for geologists. These are very interesting things that are worth a lot of money. But the advantage was that they offered solutions that were unique on the global market. The desire to make STEM education in the field of robotics affordable gave birth to a unique idea. Vlad says that he once saw in one of the districts of Kiev demolished commercial kiosks, after which the city authorities began to put things in order in the street business. Some businessmen used trailers as platforms. Vlad began thinking about what kind of service would he be capable of delivering products throughout the city or even across the entire country. So this was how the concept of robot trailers was born. The components for robotic devices, electronics, are sold there. Children can come there and groups of five people can be trained. Somewhere on the territory of the university or on the territory of the school, we just need to place one wagon and give the students or school children the opportunity to undergo a trial course for three months. Europeans and Americans are very interested in this concept. Why such interest? Well, in the US, in particular, people have to spend a lot of time traveling long distances to go to study in universities or get to their workplace. At the moment, these robot trailers are in the development phase, but Vlad says that he has already been issued a patent for his invention and nothing of the kind has been invented in the world. Ukrainian designers are interested in the development of as many people as possible in robotics in Ukraine and in foreign countries. Practice has already shown that progress in this area is not in the close laboratories of large companies, but thanks to the small teams of yesterday's amateurs. <laughs>